In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use vectors to draw a cycloid in Desmos. So let me illustrate. So this is your, so the cycloid is the green line. So, um, so as you rotate the circle, the cycloid is that green line. And the black line is your position vector. So our job is to come up with a way of drawing that cycloid. So let's start from the beginning. So, so um, in, in, in the section on parametric equations, um, we've already done this. You draw a circle, it would be um, R cos T, comma, R is the radius of a circle, R sine T. So I'm expecting you to know this because we've done in parametric equations. And then add your slider, so R represents a radius. So let's just say the radius of a circle cannot be a negative number. Let's say from 0 to 10. Uh, so we've got a circle and we want T to, to range from 0 to 2 pi. So press 2 and then P and then I. There, we've got a circle. Now we need to move it up. So this is our X coordinate. This is our Y coordinate. We want to move it up by a radius of R. So, pre, uh, so plus R to our Y component. So we've just moved the circle up. Now we want the ability to slide the circle back and forth, left and right. So uh, we need to um, adjust the, um, the X coordinate. So if we press um, plus a slider, plus a slider A. So now add a slider. Uh, we want A to range from 0 to uh, 2 pi, 2 pi. And then now we can, uh, we can uh, slide the circle back and forth. But this is not totally correct yet because, let me just illustrate, because um, by the time by the time, um, well, if, if I make the circle big like this, by the time it gets to 2 pi, I'm, I'm not sure if it has done one revolution, because l let me illustrate, hang on. Um, so let's say you've got a small circle here and a big circle here. By the time uh, time gets to 2 pi, I would expect it to have done one revolution. So let's say we've got a random circle here. By the time it gets to 2 pi, Let's just say 2 pi is here. Um, I would expect it to have done one revolution. But if you have a small circle, then it, would, uh, it wouldn't have traveled a distance of 2 pi. It would, uh, it would only have traveled a small distance. If you, um, if you have a big circle, you see currently our, our circle stops at 2 pi. So this big circle will stop at here. Um, but, but because it has a bigger circumference, then you would expect it to travel further. Uh, our current situation is that our small circle would stop at 2 pi as well. We want it to adjust accordingly so that if you have a small circle, you would have traveled a small distance. If you have a big circle, then you would have traveled a big distance. So we need to make this adjustment because currently our circle will always stop at 2 pi regardless of the radius of the circle. If I make the circle really small, it would still travel the same distance of 2 pi. See that? So we need to um, we need to make the adjustments to this in order to correct that. So what do we need to do? Well, um, let's look, let's look at this scenario here. Um, um, the, th this distance here is is the circumference of this small circle. So that that would be two pi r, where this r is for this small radius. The uh, the dis the big distance here is the same as the, the uh, circumference of the big circle. So for, for this big circle is 2 pi, let's say it's a different r, but the point here is that t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So this is really our a here, and then that's our slider. Um, this is our slider here. This is our slider. This is our slider. So uh, when, when a ticks away, by the time it gets to, um, to 2 pi, then, uh, then this is two pi here. Then you would you want it to have done this much of a distance, which is a r. If you have a big circle, then by the time it gets to here, you want it to have done a distance of a r. So going back to our going back to our um, our, our parametric equations here. See this a here is not sufficient. We we need to. We need to take into account the radius of the circle. So to correct it, we must need an R here. 
So now it will be correct. So if you have a small circle, by the time you get to two two pi, it would have it would have only done a small distance. But if you have a big circle, then uh, then by the time it gets to um, to two pi, it would have done a big distance. So now what well, the point here is that you need this AR here. Okay. So now we've got our a circle. So now we need to come up with um, with the uh, equations for our our particle with that. So now, hang on. So now we need to use factors to come up with um, with uh, with an equation to describe our cycloid. So currently, our cycloid looks like this. Not to scale. So bear with me. So our cycloid looks something like this. We want the ability to know the position of this this particle as it moves along. So the position vector is always traveling like this. You always want to know the um, position of that particle from the origin to that particle. This is our aim here. So let's say, let's say for a small change in time, delta t, this particle would have moved here. And then uh, this angle here would have been t for a small change in time. So hang on, let me just illustrate. What I'm trying to say is this. Um, Where's our particle? Hang on. Where's our particle? Uh, oh, we ha we haven't added our particle yet. Um, wh wait there. What, what I'm trying to say is this. See our particle here at the origin. If I um, if I move a, if I move a, meaning the change in time, you can see that the particle moves like this. What I'm trying to say here is this. A small change in time would result in this angle here. So so the point here is that this distance here is the same as this distance here, not to scale. Okay, because because um well these two distances should be the same but it's not to scale. I, I need to um illustrate it to you. So so to come up with the um the but to come up with the equations for the cycloid we would need to do this. In terms of vectors we, we, we ultimately want the vector t to travel from the origin to here. But the thing is, working in terms of vectors, we would need to move across here. We would need to move up. And then we would need to move across by this much and then down by this much. That would then give us the vector to travel from here to here. So let me illustrate. Hang on. So the position vector for given time is given by this. We need to move across by this much of a distance. But what is this much of a, of a distance? Well, it's like me giving you this. Um, this is a circle of radius r, and the angle is uh, t here. So what is this arc length? Well, we've done this before. You would get the whole circumference, uh, 2 pi r, divided by 2 pi, and then times the angle, t. These two cancel each other out. The point here is that this distance here is RT is RT RT um, so this distance here is actually RT this distance here is actually RT so this vector here from the origin to here is actually RT in the X direction and then in in terms of the Y direction there is no up and down movement so it's going to be zero and then uh, and then from here you would need to move straight up well, straight up would be the radius of the circle. So so that would be zero in the left-right direction. And then you would move straight up by a radius of r. By the radius of r. And then, um, and then, and then you would need to, so, so from here, that would then take us to here. Move straight up. And now we need to move across by this amount and then down by this amount. So if you look at this, hang on. So if you look at this, this is a right angle triangle in here. So for you to move across by this amount, it would be this length here, which would be, which would be less, which would be uh, sine t. So it would be uh, sine t equals, uh, let's call this x, x over r, and then you want x on its own, so it would be r, r sine t. So, so this length here, which is the same as this movement here, would be r, r, so negative because it's moving in the net to the, in the negative direction. So it would be negative r 
sine t. And then you would need to move down. Well, you moving down is is this distance here. Hang on. You would need to move down this by this much. But this much is the same as this. So let's call this x. So what is this length here? Well, that would be cos t equals x over r. So um, this length here is r cos t. So um, so you would move down by r cos t. So let me just summarize. Hang on. Let me just summarize. Hang on. So, what is the vector that takes us from the origin to here? Well, we would need to move across by this amount, which is given by this, zero in the height direction, and then we would need to move straight up by a radius of r, so straight up by the radius of r, and then we would need to move in the negative direction this much, which is um, r sine t, and then we would need to move down, which is a negative, by this much, which is given by this. So now our vector to travel from straight from from the origin to here is given by this. Is given by this. So let's let's tidy this up. So that would be um, that that would be um, R T minus R sine T, and then in the y direction, it would be R. It would be R minus r cos t so this is our vector here so this is our position vector so um so if you tidy this up it will become this so this is our position vector of our cycloid so now if we punch this into um into desmos hang on this was what we were working with so now to punch in our um our cycloid it would be, it would be bracket and I've forgotten, so hang on. It would be, um, hang on. It would be this thing here. So hang on. It would be this thing here. So that's R T minus R sine T. That's that's R T minus sine T, comma, comma what? Comma, comma this. R minus R cos T r minus r cos t close it off clean this up and uh, and we want t to range from 0 to uh, 2 pi to uh, 2 pi so something doesn't seem right hang on let me think let me double check everything R T minus R sine T. R T minus I forgot the R here. There. So that's our cycloid now. Now we need to add our particle. So um so if if you just do this zero 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 comma zero, that's how you add a particle in Desmos. So you can see it's at the, at the origin. But we want our particle to move along the cycloid. So copy and paste this but change the t to our slider a so uh, change the t to our slider a hang on rt whether uh, and then this would be a here and then uh, this copy and paste the y coordinate of our particle copy and paste and then change the t to an a because a is our slider and hopefully this will work uh, slide it and then you can see the particle is moving along now to add our our vector so the vector joins the origin to the um, to the particle so if we um, if we go to add table and then uh, we wanted to join the origin 0 0 and then we want to join it to um, to the position of our particle, which is this thing here. Hang on, let me copy and paste. Copy and paste. And then uh, the y coordinate, copy 
and paste and then we want to join join up those two coordinates so uh, click on uh, hang on let me so click turn this off and then keep your finger on it for two seconds and it doesn't work so you try it again and that doesn't work so you try it again and then for some reason it works so now um, lines so click on lines so you can see it joins it up joins up the two points so now we've done our cycloid we've done the, the position vector of our cycloid so no matter where A is it will just join join up the particle and the origin and then you can change the radius of the circle and it will still work okay Ha <laughs>